Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, for those who miss or for some reason uh, are not able to attend it properly, the recordings will be uploaded and you all can watch it, inshallah. And I'll try to figure out why the issue is happening. Okay, so we, in the previous recording, it was just a couple of minutes. I have just done revision of what we did until now. And here we are back on harf, which is the new topic, the new lesson, lesson number four. That's page number, just let me see. So it's 45. You can see here, this is 44. We are going on page 45. So harf, as we saw, are particles. Harf is one. Roof is the plural. Yes, sister. If you don't need to say anything, just mute your mic, please. So as we saw, harf is one, whereas haruf is plural. They are the third category, which we are doing right now. First was ismun, and then we come to this. Harf doesn't have four properties like an ism. What it has is it has some work to do, a job that it has to perform. So based on that, you can divide it broadly into two categories. And volume one, which is what we are doing of this book, it does not have much details. It does have quite a lot though. But in that and very much fine details are there in volume two of the book. So at least at a basic level, if we understand this very well, it will be easier for us to do volume two as well which is more detailed. So the whole chart of harf, you won't find it in this book, but there is a chart. So for your information, if you want, you can browse through that book. But for just as a at a basic level, we will just do that harf. You can categorize it into two parts. One is which does not impact the next word at all. And the other is it does impact the next word at all. It does perform some work, some job on the uh, on the word that comes after it. So that you can categorize it into haruful amila. Amila are the ones who do some amals. They do some work. They do some job. The other is haruf ghayru amila. The ones which do not do anything. So haruf amila and haruf ghayr amila. What we will be doing here in this book is haruf amila. The one which has work to perform. Ghayr amila will be done in the next volume. In this one, there will be very few, not much, but there are a couple. So you remember we had status three parts, which is Rafa, Nasb, and Jar. There is another status which Ism doesn't go into, which is Jazm. Jazm means Sukun. And Ism doesn't end in a Sukun, but actions do end in a Sukun. So you can categorize Haruf Amila, as Haruf Nasb, Haruf Jar, and Haruf Al Jazm. What does it mean? Haruf Al Nasb, what it does is the next word after it, it makes it into Nasb. As we saw, the default case of a word is Dhamma or Tanmeen Dhamma, which means the default status is Rafa. If an ism is in Nasb or it is in Jar, there will be a reason behind it. There has to be a reason. So Haruf Nasb, what happens is if there is a word that comes after it, it changes the Dhamma into a Fatha. Haruf Jar, what does it do? It changes the next word, the Dhamma, it will bring it down and it will make it a Kasra. It can be Kasra or Kasra sisters. It's Jar. Jar doesn't only mean Kasra. It means the ending of Ina, Aini, Atin. So it can be either of these. Same way, haruful jazm, what will it do? The word that comes after it, it will make it into jazm ending, sukoon ending. So we will begin, inshallah, with haruful jar. Haruful jar are what are known in English as prepositions. Like in, of, one thing you need to know that 
any word that comes after huruf jar. What does jar mean? A kasra endings, sisters of kasra, right? And what did I say? An ismun will never end in a sukoon, and an action will never end. So that is having kasra at the end be an like in writing. In is writing, I cannot say. But when I say in writing, that time writing is not an action. It is the act of writing. It is a noun. So whatever comes after harf jar, it will always be an ism. It cannot be a fa'lun. So harf jar do not act on verbs. With verbs, you may find harf jar, but that will be, it will come after the action and it just has some extra meaning. It changes the meaning to something that we will see later on. But what you need to know now is harf jar will act only on ismun. What it will do is it will make the ism ending the status. It will change it into a jar. We have on the next page a list, but let us go through some examples which I mentioned here from the Quran. The red ones that you can see on the screen are all harf jar. If you see the word after it, it will always be in kasra. Like for example, wamina na si and na si e. It is ending in e because of min. Min before it is a harf jar. May yaqulu amanna billahi. If you see ba is in red, that's a harf jar. Lafzul jalala is after it, which is in kasra. Billahi. It's not billahu. And you can never say wa mina nasu or wa mina nasa. It has to be wa mina nasi. Wa bil yawmi. Wa bil yawmi al akhiri. وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Here it is إِنَا ending. إِنَا إِنَا means a jar ending. The next one. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ لِي is a harf jar. لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ فِي is again a harf jar. You don't have فِي الْأَرْضُ It's فِي الْأَرْضِ قَلِيفَةِ So that is what is in harf jar. Now, how do you know which is a harf jar and the word after it? When does it have to go into a kasra ending? So you need to memorize this table. You need to know the words by, by heart, in memory, and with the meaning. But I will give you the order. Don't do it in this order. This is a random order. I will give you an order which will be easy to memorize. Haruf jar. There are a few which are only single alphabets. And whenever it's single alphabet, as you can see over here, Ba was a single alphabet. It joined to the next word after it. Lam was a single alphabet. It joined to the next word. So the single alphabets will always join with the next word. The first line of this harf jar list, which you need to know is Ba, Ta, Kaf, Lam, Wow. Ba, Ta, Kaf, Lam, Wow. Ba, how is it used? It is used with a kasra, b. It means with or in. There are many more meanings, but the general meanings are given here in the most common one, like you say, bismi. So that's ba. Then ta comes with a fatha, the one which is used for oath. Tallahi. So ta. Kaf is used for similarity. Like when you said something is like something, you can see the k in like, like. So with that k, you will remember k. K fata k. K means similarity. Like it said, laisa ka mithlihi shayun. Laisa ka mithli. So that is used for like. Then you have ba ta kaf lam. Lam is with a kasra li. Like alhamdu lillahi. Then wow. Wow with a fatha wa. Wallahu. One, sorry, Wallahi, one Naziati, Washamsi. So, Bata, Kaf, Lam, Wow, five. Then you will have Min, six. Min means from, so that's six. Fi, An, Ala, Hatta, Ila. Fi means in. Again, you have many more meanings. 
عن means about or from like عن النبي العظيم عن على على means upon or on توكلت على الله على then إلى sorry حتى is there in between حتى حتى means until and إلى means to or towards so again these are five في عن على حتى إلى five in total these are eleven in Arabic total harf jar are seventeen seventeen out of that eleven of these are very commonly used so we need to learn these eleven by heart very well if you need to do all seventeen I will say the list of those seventeen as well but if you don't know that way it's fine but you need to know these eleven the seventeen are Bata kaf lam wow Munzu muz khala Rubba hasha min ada Fi an ala hatta ila I will type this list or send it as an image in the group so that you know along with the meanings The eleven that you need to memorize are Bata kaf lam wow Min Fi an ala hatta ila this picture is there in the book so you can memorize the meanings from here that was the second thing that we did here third thing that you need to know is sometimes when you attach these to other words there are some changes like for example lamb I told you is li lamb kasara li alhamdu lillahi but when you attach it to a pronoun it will carry a fatha like for example li plus who that's the pronoun who meaning his I will not say Lihu for him. I will not say lihu. It will be lahu for him. Ila plus hu. What will it become? Ila is harf jar. You need a jar after it. So the hu, the pronouns, attached pronouns, we saw their properties. Attached pronouns can be nasb or jar. So hu itself, it will be jar when it gets attached. But what happens is the ya will get dots. It will become ilai. And who will become he? Eli he. It's more easier to pronounce that way. Fi plus huma will not be fi huma. It will be fi hima. It will take kasra. It's more easier to pronounce. Fi hima. Ala plus hunna will be alay hinna. Not alay hunna. Alay hinna. That's how the Arabs spoke. So we have to learn it that way. B plus hum will not be bihum. It will be bihim with a kasra. Min plus who will not be min he like how ilayhi fi hima. So min it will not be min he it will be min who from him min who. So when harf jar attaches to pronouns, how do they change? Is one thing that you need to do. Then you have another thing that there are some nouns some ismun that do the same work which a harf jar does they do the same work they are not harf jar because harf jar what did we do what did we say they are 17 and 11 is what we just memorized but these are nouns but they act like harf jar they do the same work meaning the word that comes after it it brings it into jar status. They usually come in a construction called position construction is what they are known as. We haven't done constructions as yet. When we come to that, I will explain that part again. So you can ignore this part for now. It's okay if you do not understand that portion. But what you need to know, there are some nouns that act or they do the action of harf jar. They are known as dharf. Dha, ra, fa, dharf. Like harf plural is huruf. Dharf plural is dhuruf. These words are known as zuruf. You have two categories in this. Zarf zaman and zarf makan. Zaman means zamana, time. So these are words that show a time, when. And there are zarful makan. These words show a place, where it is. So there are a few examples here of harf jar like nouns. Which is nouns that act like harf jar. Ba'da, ba'da means some. Or a few. Hawla means around. Qabla means before. Ba'da with a dal. Ba'da was some. 
But the one with dal ba'da means after. So qabla ba'da, before, after. Duna means besides or other than. Min duna is also other than. Ghayra is also other than. Like min dunillah or ghayri al maghdubi. So ghayr min duna. Then ladun or laday means from or with. Like Rabbana atina min ladun ka al rahma. Min ladun ka it's ladun. That's, that's this word. These words, it's not necessary for you all now to memorize them. Now, what you need to memorize is the list above, which is of Harf Jar. These words, you need to know the meaning. Also, you don't have to memorize it by heart, but you need to know the meaning. Whenever I give you this word, you should know what the word means. The next thing is, what is mentioned is a list of Zarf Zaman and Zarful Makan. Zaman which show the timing like Qabla, when it was before. Ba'da, when it is after. al when today. Abadan, always. Hainan, for a period of time. Sabahan, morning. Bukratan, early morning or sahran from sihri or sihr means early morning again. Then Zarful Makan which show a place that where it is. Is amama means in front of. Baina means between. I hope you all are able to see the screen. Yeah, actually, I was coming here. For some reason, mic is not mute. I was not able to come back here to it. I'll just mute your mic. Please do not write anything on the screen. So we saw Zarful Makan. Amama means in front of. Baina means between. Fauqa means above. Tahta means under. All these are showing positions or places. Makan, where, place. Bara'a, behind. Khalfa, before. Ma'a or Ainda means with. If you don't learn all these in a day, it's fine. Just spend some time, do it daily, and inshallah, slowly you will learn it all. There are some examples mentioned here for these words. Like, uh, this is Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 56. Thumma ma'athnaakum min ba'di. Ba'di means? Bada after min ba'di mautikum la'allakum tashkurum. Then we revived you after your death that perhaps you would be grateful. Now, if you see the word after ba'di, you will say it's ending in a sukun, it's not jar. But if you see, first thing that you need to do is break it down. That's not one word, that's two words. It's mauti plus kum. So ba'di, min ba'di, not mauta, not mautu. Mauti, Badi Mauti. So that's Kasra, it's a jar ending. And Kum is just another word that's attached, it's a pronoun. Then next ayah, next ayah mentioned Tilka Hududu Lahi, Wamai Yuti Illaha, Wamai Yuti Illaha, Warasulahu, Yudhil Hujanatin, Tajri, Min, Namin. You know, it's from Harf Jar, but we will leave that because. If you see here, the word was tahta. You see this one here on top, Zarful Makan. Tahta. It became tahti because of the min, but we'll leave that for now. Because right now we need to focus on tahti, which is the Zarful Makan. Tahti ha. The ha is an attached pronoun. And as we know, attached pronouns can be either nas or it can be jar. Over here, since it is coming after a zarf, that means it is in jar. Because what is the work of, j of a zarf? It makes the word after it into jar. It acts like a harf jar. So, min tahti hal anhar. These are the limits of Allah, and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger will be admitted to Him. Sorry, admitted by Him to gardens under which rivers flow. Then here again you have qabli and ba'du. La yastawi minkum man anfaq min qabli 
al fathi it's kasra so after qabli you have qabli al fathi kasra wa qatala ulaika a'zamu darajatan min alladhina anfaqu min ba'du wa qatalu min ba'du wa qatalu here actually qatalu is a verb it's an action so that's not an ismun if it was an ismun it would have been in jar so you can leave that one also out for now the note that is mentioned below is for this one which we saw here the words for harf jar yeah this one only that uh, min is a harf jar and after that ba'du if you see it's not in but mean ba'di it's mean ba'du and also about the position constructions which we are leaving out for now so all this we will cover later on so you can leave out this part for now the other thing that you know need to know for now in particles is which is which particles are we doing now harf jar which is prepositions we saw in the first list which was singular ba ta kaf lam wow there were five out of that there are three which are used for making an oath they are known as huruful qasam qasam means oath so the particles for oath are harf jar any ism that comes after it will be having a kasra ending the most common of these is wow the next is ta and sometimes even ba is used for oath now here why you need to know that is wow has more meanings wow can also mean and like as samawati wal ardi here also ardi is in kasra but here the meaning is not of qasam it means and samawat and ard then you have as shamsu wal qamaru you have wow but you have wal qamaru you don't have wal qamari it's not ending in jar what did we say harf al qasam is it's harf of jar it will make the word after it as jar like here in the second one you can see here wal qamari it's ending in kasra so when wow after that if if it is used as a huruf al qasam if it is used for an oath the ism after it will be in kasra but if it is not used as a huruf al qasam it will not have any impact on the arab of the next word arab means status it will not change the arab it will not change the ending of the word after it if it is used as other than huruf al qasam if it is used for qasam like over here if you see washamsi washamsi wa duhaha by the sun and its brightness wal qamari idha talaha and by the moon when it follows it wan nahari idha jallaha wan nahari so all are ending in e shamsi qamari nahari why e because wow here is huruf al qasam wan naziati it is the ending of atin which is kasra so huruf al qasam is the one which is huruf al jar so when we say ba ta kaf lam wow the wow here is from harf al qasam not the other wow the other wow will be coming in the other topics that we will do because harf as we saw harf has many categories what we have begun is only from harf jar next one is particles of nasb which we will do in the next session for today we will just stop here because we need to memorize this chart so you need some time and you need to have little data if you have a lot of data it will become difficult so i will repeat the chart again every one of you who who can talk can please unmute your mic and repeat the chart ba ta kaf lam waw min fi an ala hatta ila ba ta kaf lam waw fi an ala hatta ila So your homework for this class memorize the chart very very well i will end the recording here but uh, the 